To show its continual support to reward the efforts of the cocoa farmers in Ghana, the Ghana Cocoa Board in August 2012 sponsored a 10-day tour of the UK for the 2011 National Best Cocoa Farmer opening Edu Tebri. The award for National Best Cocoa Farmer was introduced in 1985 by the Ghana Cocoa Board to encourage and motivate cocoa farmers to improve their farming practices and strive to increase their yield. In 2002, the trip to the UK was added as part of the award package to the winning farmer. The visit was aimed to expose the farmer to farming practices in the developed world as well as allow the farmer to see the value placed on Ghana's cocoa on the international market. Accompanying the farmer this year was the Public Affairs Manager for Cocoa Board, Mr. Noah Amenya, and Madam Mary February, wife of the 2011 National Best Cocoa Farmer. Welcoming the farmer and entourage at the Ghana Cocoa Marketing Company UK Limited offices in Mill Hill, London, Mr. Musel and Bonnie, the manager, congratulated Openin Tebri for his contribution to the growth of the Ghana cocoa industry. He gave the farmer a brief background of the activities of CMC UK Limited. Uh, following the instructions of the chief executive and government, we have also put in place a, a, a program for you to go through. In the first place, uh, uh, the entourage will be paying a courtesy call on Monday to the Ghana High Commissioner for, for, for him to welcome us into the city of London, that's number one. And then secondly, we're going to organize a city tour of London for, for the entourage, for them to uh, appreciate London and uh, also learn some few things about the culture and uh, the political and other situations of, of the UK. From the CMC offices, the farmer and entourage made a stop next door to the offices of the Ghana Forestry Commission's Timber Development Division UK offices. At the Forestry Commission office, Mr. Len Bonnie introduced the delegation from Ghana to the manager of the division, Dr. Nuruddin Idris. Before embarking on the official tour of the UK, the farmer and entourage, as tradition required, paid a courtesy call on the Ghana High Commissioner to the UK and Ireland, His Excellency Professor Kweku Danso Buafo, at his Belgrade Square offices in London. Accompanying the farmer to the Ghana mission was Mr. Noah Amenya, Public Affairs Manager, Cocoa Board, Mr. Musa Lemboni, Manager, CMC UK. Mr. George Finn, Minister of Trade and Investment at the Ghana High Commission UK, and Madam February, wife of the National Best Cocoa Farm. Mr. Amenya took time to give a brief background about Opinion Tebri and his achievement as a cocoa farmer. He also gave a brief update on the Ghana cocoa industry, assuring the High Commissioner that the industry was doing well. He also mentioned Cocoa Board's cocoa rehabilitation program launched in April 2012. Mr. Amenya said the program is set to assist increase and sustain cocoa production in Ghana through rehabilitation and replanting of old and diseased cocoa trees. In his response, His Excellency Professor Kweku Danso Buafo welcomed the farmer and entourage to the UK. His Excellency was thankful to Cocoa Board for responding to his suggestion a year ago for Cocoa Board to consider including the wife of the best cocoa farmer on the tour. His Excellency said the wives of the Ghana cocoa farmers contributed immensely behind the scenes both at home and on the farms. Opening Tebri, on behalf of Cocoa Board and Cocoa Farmers in Ghana, made a presentation of a collection of Made in Ghana chocolate to His Excellency.
On Wednesday, 8th August 2012, Mr. George Finn, Trade and Investment Minister at the Ghana High Commission UK, led the farmer and delegation to take part in the 81st Ashover Agricultural and Horticultural Show in Derbyshire, UK, North Midlands of England. Ghana is uh, a major or I say a leading producer of cocoa and uh, cocoa being an agricultural uh, community has a very important role uh, to play. Uh, again, being an export means that it is a major trading item. So as trade and investment, our job is to ensure that the best cocoa farmers visit to UK uh, yield the maximum benefit for him to learn in terms of best practices, in terms of uh, farming, animal husbandry, poultry, and so we've been working closely with the cocoa marketing company UK to uh, plan and then facilitate this visit to Ashova. He will learn something from here. You know, he's not only into cocoa. He has cattle, he has sheep, he has other things. So as he look around, he has seen a number of uh, breeds, different types of cattle, and he's highly impressed. And he feels that he could get a better breed that could be a bit exotic, that would help uh, for him to be able to produce more cattle. So these are all ways of motivating the farmers, changing the environment, letting them learn something small so that when they go back, at least they will be able to impact into our farming systems. Yet <laughs> Nana Tebri and Enterite paid a courtesy call on Olam UK offices in the West End of London. Olam is one of the world's major supply chain organizations. In Ghana, Olam is among the largest private license buying companies in the Ghana cocoa sector. Olam are also one of Ghana's leading cashew exporters and importers of rice, sugar, tomato paste and palm oil. Olam's UK offices is responsible for cocoa products trading. The office also serves as the headquarters of Olam's cocoa business worldwide, the central hub for Olam's corporate responsibility and sustainability team, and their manufacturing and technical services team function. Mr. Edu Tabri was selected as the best uh, national cocoa farmer 
Right. He has about 300 hectares of land in five locations uh, across two regions. Uh, but he's resident at Sankori, uh, which is in the Branahafu region. Okay. And he produced 3,805 bags to win the award. Wow. <laughs> uh, so that, that, that is no mean achievement. Right. Yes, and uh, he has uh, other, other crops as well. He produces cashew. Right. And he also has uh, oil palm. Right. Yes, and then he has some fish ponds. Uh, right. So he produces fish as well. Wow. He has cattle. Right. He has sheep and goats and uh, mm. poultry. Right. Yeah, so, so, so he's diversified. Yeah, diversified. diversified. Yes, <laughs> yes. So he's, he's a real farmer. Um, he has also contributed to his environment uh, or his community. He spearheaded the construction of a five kilometer road to his village and had also sunk a borehole to give um, potable water to, to the people in his community. He has built his own cocoa shed. Right. Um, and others uh, around him are able to also sell it. Right. They could go to that shed. Right. So we'll, we'll say that um, he's, he's been very uh, right. hard working. He started his uh, farming activity in 1962 right. and um, would cultivate crops, sell, use the money right. to expand the cocoa uh, plantations and that has brought him this far. Uh, in fact, he's done well by getting all his farms registered. So he has right. site plans and uh, documents covering all the lands that, that he, he has. Right. His wife is Mary Adu, uh, Mary Febri. Uh, Mary uh, had been a source of encouragement to the husband. And so when the husband won the award, uh, Kokobo decided that as part of the uh, gift to the husband, uh, we gave him a brand new um, Toyota Hilux pickup right. to help him in his farming activities and some other materials and some cash and added a trip um, to UK uh, yeah. for him. And we said for the first time ever, we would ask his wife to join him right. so that uh, she can give the moral support as we go along. <laughs> so for the very first time, uh, now, uh, Mr. Dutebri's wife, Mary, uh, has accompanied uh, him. Right. And I think that uh, this will also be a source of inspiration and motivation for other women to be able to support their husbands in right. whatever mm -hmm. venture they find themselves. Right. And they also encourage uh, a lot more. She also has her own farm. She has a 50 hectare farm. Right. Apart from helping the husband, she's able to go to her own farm, which is also cocoa. So she's also producing cocoa as well. Um, for education, his children, he has some of his children in the university, some in second cycle institutions, some are region agriculture. Um, he thinks that at the end of the day, they will be able to come back to the farm and help to increase the technologies and things that uh, he's using on these farms. So he's a very good example. And we hope that he would enjoy his trip here. The farmer was welcomed by Mr. Jerry Manley, Managing Director Kuko at Olam. We, we, we truly um, uh, support and uh, obviously for us in the cocoa world, uh, Ghana sets, sets that benchmark mm -hmm. standard, standard yeah. Uh, yeah. both for the quality uh, that's produced yes. and um, I, obviously, I, I tell my people a lot, uh, that if, if, if you want to go and understand how cocoa should be uh, grown, mm -hmm. uh, how should it be harvested, mm -hmm. how you should ferment it, mm -hmm. how you should dry it, how you should transport it, yeah. how you should export it, <laughs> yeah. okay, then just go to Ghana <laughs> and just follow the just follow the process. Yeah. Okay? Yes, yes, yes. Because uh, you know you, you have such a wonderful way. Many people write many books. Yes. Okay, but actually if you go and see how it's done in Ghana, mm. we've tried to copy that practice, whether it's in Cote d'Ivoire or whether it's been in Malaysia or Indonesia, wherever it is in the world, we, we, we always try and practice what, what well, you've done for generations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so truly, it's, uh, uh, we, we appreciate the good work that, that you and your other farmers have, have, have done. 
Following on from his manly speech, Mr. Chris Brett, Global Head Corporate Responsibility and Sustainability at Olam, gave the farmer a brief background of Olam's operations. It's really been interesting work with the, the uh, farmers of Ghana to actually learn in Ghana and then take it outside as well. And I think one of our strengths has been working with the farmers to come up with innovative new type of project where we're looking at setting up with uh, Rainforest Alliance and the communities on how we can look at developing the farmers on what we call a low carbon or a carbon friendly approach to cocoa so that we can look at how we can develop hopefully going forward systems where we can measure carbon increases on farms and within the surrounding area so it's more of a what we call a landscape level project as opposed to just purely cocoa but the co cocoa is the key element of bringing that project together so just as what jerry is saying is that it shows a, a strong commitment that we've come there with rainforest alliance we've also brought in uh, further donor support from norway and the us into that area so we're hoping that we can replicate that learning out and hopefully as we look at it going forward we can see as how it can improve extra income streams into the cocoa supply chain. It can also help to develop really a long-term investment strategy in cocoa as well. Opening Tiburi in return thanked Olam for their support to the Ghana cocoa industry. He said the trip has been a real motivator to him and promised Olam that on his return he will encourage his fellow farmers to work hard to ensure the growth of the industry. During the visit to Olam, Opening Tiburi was given a live demonstration on how Ghana's cocoa is traded on the international market. Opening Tiburi, his wife Madame February and delegation took time out of their busy schedule to undertake a city tour of London. The visit of the farmer to UK coincided with the Olympic Games which was being held in London. The city of London was full of activities and events to mark the Olympics. Next stop for the farmer was the offices of Amajaro. At Amajaro, Mr. Nico Debenham, Director of Development and Sustainability, gave a brief background on Amajaro's operations. We started our business over 10 years ago in, in Ghana as a licensed buying company as Armajaro Ghana Limited. We then, up till to date, we now have 70 district operations in Ghana with over 2,500 societies buying from 100,000 farmers. We most of all respect the success of Mr. Edu Tabiri because of his entrepreneurial nature in his farming business. 
This is what we promote in, in the training that we do with our farmers, is to try and help them to understand that their farms are businesses and that they should try and be, make them entrepreneurial and efficient. And his example of having a diversified farm with high productivity generating himself a very good living is something that we should, be, we should all be holding up high. And he is thoroughly deserved winner of the Best Farmer Award, not only because of his efficiency as a farmer, but is also his commitment to his own community, in which he has demonstrated by building a road, also building a water well, and a warehouse for his fellow farmers to store their cocoa. <laughs> At the end of his presentation, Mr. Debenham, on behalf of Majaro, made a presentation to Opinin Tebri. On that note, I would like to present the award from Armajaro for his achievement in becoming the national best farmer for Ghana in 2011. And we congratulate him on his amazing success. Mr. Musa Lemboni, manager for CMC UK, on behalf of the Farmer and Cocoa Board, thanked Amajaro for the hospitality showed the National Best Cocoa Farmer and his delegation from Ghana. Mr. Lemboni also applauded Amajaro for their support to the Ghana cocoa industry. The farmer and his entourage headed out to Bonville in Birmingham to visit the factory of Cadbury Craft Chocolates. Cadbury has been a major user of Ghana's cocoa beans for over 100 years. Mr. Jonathan Horrell, Director of Sustainability, gave a brief background of Cadbury and its long-standing relationship with Ghana cocoa industry. I work with a number of our teams across the world who are doing sustainability programs uh, for craft foods and everything that we make and sell began life on a farm, uh, including myself by the way, I'm a farmer's son from, uh, from the west of England. So we depend entirely on a sustainable supply, a long term sustainable supply of high quality uh, ingredients, raw materials uh, for our uh, for our brands. Uh, without that we can't make and sell what we need to delight our consumers and to grow our business. And so we can't underestimate the importance of agricultural sustainability to us. And of course as the world's leading chocolate company now, um, then we are uh, uh, dependent on cocoa. Um, so welcome. Following on from the brief meeting at Kraft Chocolates offices, the delegation were taken on a tour of the Cadbury World, which offers its visitors the opportunity to explore and discover chocolate's history and learn about the origins and story of the Cadbury business, one of the world's largest confectionery manufacturers. During the tour, the delegation had the opportunity to see how chocolates are made from cocoa liquor.
Back in London on Thursday, 16th August 2012, Openin Tibri visited the offices of Ghana International Bank, a fully owned Ghanaian bank operating from Cheapside in the city of London for over 50 years. The delegation was again led by Mr. George Finn, the Minister for Trade and Investment at the Ghana High Commission UK. GHIB plays an important role on behalf of Ghana and Cocoa Board. The bank manages the revenues received from the sale of Ghana Cocoa abroad and acts as lead arrangers for Cocoa Board's annual trade finance facility. Meeting the delegation was Mr. Joe Mensa, manager of the bank. Mr. Mensa took the farm around the various sections of the bank. During the visit, Opening Tebri on behalf of Cocoa Board and Government of Ghana exchanged gifts with GHIB. Opening Tebri and his wife, Madame Febri's tour of the UK came to a close with a barbecue on Friday, 17th August 2012, hosted by Mr. Musa Lenboni, manager CMC UK. The National Best Cocoa Farmer for 2012, reflecting on the visit, was full of gratitude to the government of Ghana and Cocoa Board for the honour given him and his family to be able to travel to the UK to experience at first hand the value placed on Ghana's cocoa outside Ghana and also to interact with farmers in Europe. He promised that he will go all out to champion the effort of Cocoa Board to encourage farmers to adopt prescribed agronomical practices that will ensure a sustained future for the cocoa industry. Thank you.